What's up guys? This video is a compilation of all 8 builds from our 7th series of custom Akedo Warriors, including the Series 7 tournament that was just absolutely amazing. And real quick, before we start, we're giving away a complete set of Series 1 Akedo Warriors when we hit 100,000 subscribers. That includes the limited edition Stormstrike, so please hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, run the intro! Can I turn one of our Akedo Warrior doubles into a one-of-a-kind custom creation? Make sure you stick around to the end to find out. All I hear, go get the money. So I go get it. Hate means I do something right. So I'ma let him. What's up everyone? As you can see, I'm desperately searching through all the Akedo Warriors trying to find someone we can use for Doc Ock. I already have his mechanical arms from the Lego set I purchased a long time ago. I just haven't been able to figure out his head. Okay, wait a minute. It's not gonna be that easy, is it? Do I have a double of Agent Modi? Let's go check. Do you see any? I have more in this bucket. Oh, thank goodness. Here's one. Let's go to the workshop. I'm pretty sure Agent Modi is a spoof of Agent Motor from the X-Files. But what is this weapon? Is it supposed to be a Ghostbuster proton gun? Okay, quick survey. If I do make a Ghostbuster, who would it be? Let me know in the comments. Taking these figures off their base is really hit or miss. Some eventually pop off after some prying, and some will only come off with the peg broken off in the foot. And today, we got lucky. I'm gonna cut off both feet below the knee so we can reposition them. Something like that. Next, I'll drill out holes on both sides of the cut. Then reconnect the pieces with wire. Now, I'll fill in these gaps using my 3D pen. The 3D pen filament dries fairly quickly, but you have about a 10 second window in which you can do some shaping. This is the Lego Doc Ock I bought specifically for his robotic arms. The ball joint segments allow for full customization. In order to make sure Doc Ock is unbreakable, I'll reinforce every connection with a piece of wire and super glue. As you probably already guessed, Doc Ock will be held up with two of his robotic arms. I think it's gonna look awesome, if we can pull it off. It took me a lot of time figuring out exactly how long to make each arm and which way to bend them. My two main concerns were that Doc Ock's head remain at the same height as any other Akedo warrior. And I also didn't want his body to be too extended off the base. In order to keep things as fair as possible, I tried to make Doc Ock's striking arm around the same length as any other Akedo Warrior's weapon. Once I was satisfied with the position of the arms, I coated every joint with super glue. 
and left everything to dry overnight. Now that the super glue is all dry, we are ready to paint. I really want to make these arms stand out and what better way than to paint them metallic silver. As for Doc Ock, I honestly didn't know what I was going to do for the paint scheme even at this point in the project. But while I was scrolling through all the different versions of Doc Ock, I found one that I really liked and it turned out perfect. I'm not going to tell you guys which version I'm painting, just watch it unfold and let me know in the comments what you think of my choice. Are you guys ready for Custom Akedo Doc Ock? I really wish we could test him out but I literally just glued him all together and he still needs to dry. But don't worry because the battle challenge video with Eddie and Clark is coming soon. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's customization, then smash that like and subscribe button and we will see you in the next video. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Eddie's World Workshop. Do you remember our first attempt at a Five Nights at Freddy's Akedo Warrior? It was Withered Bonnie with removable faceplate and real metal guitar. Today, we'll attempt to make Golden Freddy, requested by our resident Five Nights at Freddy's expert. Yesterday, the boys were doing experiments with their Treasure X figures and found this local grande. The mic is the perfect weapon, but I'm not so sure about the body. Let's check the parts jar and see what we can find. Okay guys, here's the plan. Because I'll be doing something I've never attempted before, let's use one of these Mr. Splits to do a few tests on before we decide who to use. While I was talking to Eddie about making Golden Freddy, he told me that I had to make him sitting down. I love that idea. It sounds like a good challenge and I think I just figured out how to do it. Thanks for the tip, son. You may have just saved this build. In order to make Golden Freddy look good and be an effective striker, we need to find the right warrior. Mr. 
Master C's arms are positioned perfectly. And with minor modifications, I think he'll make a perfect Golden Freddy. This time, I'm gonna cut him a little lower below the waist. Now let's carefully remove the head and hand coverings. It's looking really good so far, but Golden Freddy's hands aren't clenched. They're palm up and open with his mic gently resting in his right hand. You guys know this. I'm just gonna look through this bin and see what I can find. If I use anything, I promise, I'll replace it. When we took the flames off of the fist, we really reduced their size and weight. In order to compensate for that, I wanna use larger hands like we did for the Black Panther Warrior. Wait a minute. Here is a really bad, unlicensed Freddy figure that I'm pretty sure nobody will miss. Because these hands will be taking constant impact during battle, I'll reinforce the joint with a steel pin. Now, let's reattach our figure to the base, making sure to align him in the right direction. While this is drying in the sun, let's go look at the head we'll be using for today's project. This is a McFarlane Toys Five Nights at Freddy's prop head that comes in one of the sets. I wouldn't want to use a real head because those things are really expensive and hard to find. Not to mention, Eddie would be extremely upset. I was considering grinding out the eyes, but Eddie told me that painting them black would be good enough and I'll have to agree with him. The only thing left to figure out is the legs. I'm gonna use my 3D pen to make them a little longer to create the illusion that Freddy is actually sitting with his legs bent in front of him. That's the best I can do without them interfering with his split strike. And as much as I'd like to give him three spread out toes, there simply isn't any room for them. I almost forgot that Golden Freddy has his mouth wide open with his teeth showing. I'm gonna make a cut between his upper and lower jaw, but I don't wanna separate the two sides. With the help of a kerf cut, I think we can prop open the mouth, then use some super glue to hold it in place. And while that's drying, let me show you how we're gonna deal with the fact that Golden Freddy is half an inch shorter than your average Akato warrior. I use this technique for the Among Us figure, but instead of using Bondo, I'm gonna save myself a bunch of time by gluing these spare bases together. This is a shave down brush from a gold digit and it'll make perfect teeth. I'll just cut six pieces off and glue them to the bottom jaw. That's it for fabrication and now we can finish painting. I've decided to paint the base black so it doesn't draw any attention away from Golden Freddy. And I also gave it a gloss finish to make it nice and shiny. The paint scheme is fairly simple and luckily I was able to match all the colors with paints I already had. With everything painted, we can assemble the pieces and reveal the finished product.
Are you ready? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I decided not to glue on his mic because it sits pretty snug in his hand and I wanted to test him out with Eddie and Clark to see if the mic made him too OP or maybe he needs the mic. But that's gonna have to come in another video because I wanna give Golden Freddy a little more time to fully dry. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's customization, then please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, share this with your friends, and let me know in the comments what character you want me to turn into an Akedo Warrior, and we will see you in the next video. No! Astro gets hit hard. And Astro gets a quick victory. And down goes Maz. And Astro does it. Maz the Mosquito King has fallen in battle. me to believe one single earthling is responsible for this? First, we made an Eddie's World themed warrior named Astro, and I gave him by far the most powerful weapon in all of Akedo. Next came Maz, the Mosquito King, and I'll admit it, I definitely slacked on his weapon. He was no match for Astro and, well, you saw what happened. Today marks the rise of the Mosquitoes. I'm gonna use Alpha Wolf, some ball bearings, and a couple Lego figures to make the most devastating and invincible warrior ever. Now that we have everything we need, let's rip open this brand new Alpha Wolf. How well did they attach this head? Uh oh. Taking the head off in one piece is really a struggle with these battle giants, but it's something I wish I did with all our giant customizations. Should I make a normal sized alpha wolf? That might be cool. Here's the Lego mosquito head I'll be using for today's build. I love the antennas. We just need to make the hole in the bottom of the head a little bigger. And we also need to make the hole extend through the top of the head so that the armor can function properly. I also want to take Alpha Wolf's gloves off because I have big plans for our new Mosquito Warriors weapons. In order to compete with Astro, we need to fight fire with fire. These things are really stuck on and I think I'm going to have to grind the rest of it off. Now we're ready for the big surprise. Clutched in each of our Mosquito Warriors hands will be two red ball bearings. That should give him the firepower he needs to compete against Astro. And while we let that dry, let's modify this armor. I'm gonna use the technique I came up with while making our General Grievous Giant. It's basically the removal of the top of the armor, leaving just the peg. This allows for bigger heads to be used on the figure itself. 
And because our mosquito head has a long pointy mouth, I'm also going to cut a channel in the front of the armor so it can be ejected properly. Now that the ball bearings are securely attached, I'm going to sculpt fingers using a brand new product that I've never used before. It's epoxy clay. It comes in two parts and after you mix them together, you have about 8 hours until it completely hardens. I really enjoyed working with the epoxy clay and even though I never used it before, everything came out better than expected and after about 8 hours, the fingers were hard to the touch. In order to make this figure look as fearsome as possible, I'm going to grind lines all over his body. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see it with the armor on. I had some leftover clay that I didn't want to waste, so I made a mohawk. The clay hasn't completely hardened, so let's cut that mohawk down a little. That's looking really good. But there's one last thing I want to add. Can you guys guess what it is? All mosquitoes have it. Did you guess wings? That looks awesome and we're ready to paint. I was really torn between painting the armor silver or gold, but in the end, I decided to paint it black. I just wanted to do something different and I may have been inspired by the glimpse we got of the new Series 5 Battle Giants. I did make an awesome discovery during this paint job that I wanted to share with everyone. Does anyone else have paint palettes that look like this? Well, instead of buying more, just use the cap of a water bottle. And when you're done with that color, screw it back on to a half-filled bottle and give it a good shake. Just like that, you're ready for a new color. And the best part about it, it's free. Are you ready for our new... for Stormstrike and Lord Shifta left us with a lot of doubles. In today's video, I'm going to turn one of those doubles into a one-of-a-kind custom warrior. First, we made Withered Bonnie. He features a removable mask and a solid aluminum guitar. I got some of the backstory wrong, but all in all, it was a good video. He went on to win his battle challenge, which was a beat or eat challenge. Yeah! Forcing Eddie and Clark to eat a cheese pizza MRE. Dude, that is so disgusting. <laughs> he didn't do too good in the Halloween tournament though. Darn Mimikyu. Next, we made Golden Freddy the world's first Akedo warrior that fights sitting down. He went undefeated in his battle challenge, defeating all the other Akedo bears. Oh my God. Today, I've chosen to make Lawbit. 
He's one of the most expensive McFarlane figures out there, and his Funko figure isn't cheap either. But in reality, I've noticed that all these figures are getting really expensive. And while I made both Withered Bonnie and Golden Freddy out of prop heads that you get as extra pieces in some of the sets, Foxy's prop head looks really bad. But Funtime Foxy's head is identical to Lawbits, so I quickly jumped onto eBay and ordered a brand new Funtime Foxy set for what I think was a pretty good deal. Lawbit is a rare and special character, so it's only right that we use a special Akato Warrior to make him. This is one of my last Buster splits, but I think he's gonna be perfect for today's customization. Before we get started, I need to get more information from a trusted source. Eddie's Five Nights at Freddy's official character encyclopedia. This is interesting. So Lawbit is a recolored version of Funtime Foxy. And in sister location, you get them off the computer screens by typing LOL. I think we can get started. If you guys are wondering why all my tools are laid out like this, it's because it rained a lot last night and some of the water got in my toolbox. So I took everything out, gave my toolbox a good cleaning, and now I'm waiting for everything to dry. Okay, now that everyone's all caught up, let's get all the tools we need to start grinding. Unlike all our other Akedo customizations, the McFarlane head will sit atop this grinded down neck being secured only with super glue. And trust me, this bond will be strong enough to withstand even Eddie and Clark's abuse. This is the one thing I don't like about Buster Splits. He's so bumpy and deformed, you really have to spend a lot of time getting him smooth and proportional. Now that we removed all the unwanted material, let's add all of Lawbit's features that make her unique. I've been using this epoxy clay a lot recently. And it's because it's awesome. After you mix part A with part B, it'll harden after about 8 hours. That means that I can add details directly onto the figure. In this case, I'll use the clay to fill some holes, build up the chest, shape the feet, and make the tail. I'm also going to use this leftover clay to make a special attachment for Lawbit's fist. Just a little something to give her an advantage. We've already seen the power of Withered Bonnie and Golden Freddy, and I don't want to leave Lawbit at a disadvantage, just in case we have a Five Nights at Freddy's tournament one day. This is another cool feature about the epoxy clay. After it hardens, it can be further shaped with a file, sandpaper, or grinder. Lawbit has what appears to be a speaker on her chest, and the easiest way for me to mimic this is to use a Lego piece. I don't want to cut it in half, so I'm going to glue it to one side of the body, and it'll just slide over the other half.
I'll fill in the cavity with some epoxy clay and add the lines with a knife. After I carve out a little bow tie, we'll be ready to paint. What do you think of Lawbit, our third custom Five Nights at Freddy's Akato Warrior? I noticed from the beginning that the buster splits I used had a really strong neck and it takes a lot of force to split her. So I'm going to have to come up with something really good for the battle challenge. I'm thinking maybe more Five Nights at Freddy's mining kits and hopefully we'll find gold. If you guys want to see that happen, get this video to 2000 likes and we'll do a law bit battle challenge and open 20 mining kits. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Please don't forget to pet your dog. What's this about? Eddie's World is finally doing a My Hero Academia Akato Warrior. I've been subscribed to Eddie's World forever. What reason do you have to not be subscribed? I'm not subscribed. What? What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Eddie's World. In today's video, I'm going to be making a custom Akedo Warrior that I was supposed to make last year before our Japan trip. I was planning on using the figure in our Battles in Japan video. He would have been so perfect. I'm definitely bringing him when we go back. The figure I'm talking about is Bakugo Katsuki from My Hero Academia. For today's build, I'll be using this 3 inch figure, a domes figure, and a series 3 favorite of mine, Max Snapper, who I have a lot of. Guys, I have a confession to make. Not only do I have no idea who Bakugo Katsuki is, I've never even seen My Hero Academia. What is it? Is it a movie, TV series? All I have are questions. So not only do I have to start working on the figure, I got a bunch of research to do. Luckily, I planned this out a long time ago, so I have everything I need to begin the build.
As usual, I'll be starting off with the head swap. For some reason, Bakugo has butterfly wings sticking out the back of his head and I want to make sure they're not going to interfere with the split strike. I'm about to grind this figure down, so as always, I'll be using a respirator and eye protection. I'm gonna have to use a straw to elevate Bakugo's head, or it just isn't gonna look right. This is a technique that I've used a few times before, so it's not a problem. Huh. That looks good. He splits properly, and I learned some things about Bakugo. He's hot-headed, extremely competitive, and he doesn't exactly follow the rules. I kind of like this guy. I'm the real deal. I'm going to strip everything I need off both these figures, then decide what pieces to use later. I chose Max Snapper for his punching arm, but his body isn't exactly a perfect match. So before we start attaching parts, we got a bunch of grinding to do. Halfway through grinding the bell bottoms off, a brilliant idea popped into my head. Why not just change them with more suitable legs? I gotta have something that works in the parts jar. Toxinator's military style pants are a perfect match. For the punching fist, I'll be using a really big grenade. And I'm hoping to attach it in such a way that it can still slide back and forth. I have to admit, when I first saw Bakugo, I thought he looked a little ridiculous. But now that I know more about him, I think he's pretty cool. It turns out that the grenades on his fist are actually canisters that store his sweat, making it easier for him to use his quirk, explosions. I can't believe I got it to work, and I can already tell, this guy is going to be a champion one day. You'll never beat me. For his left hand, I'll be using the smaller domes figure grenade, and as strange as it may look, I definitely think it was the right choice. The last thing I need to do before paint is patch a few areas with some epoxy clay. By now, you guys all know, I love this stuff, and I've used it enough to give you guys a few pointers. First, always use gloves. This is epoxy. It says it right in its name. It's super sticky, and you don't want it on your skin. Second, you see how I'm only putting one hand in each container? That's so there's no cross-contamination. Third, only mix what you plan on using. This stuff isn't cheap. And fourth, set yourself up with a good set of sculpting tools and a jar of water. The water prevents the clay from sticking to your tools. Everything is looking really good. I just noticed Bakugo has grenades on his belt, and I remember having some small Lego grenades. If I can find them, it'll be an easy upgrade for our figure. There's one, and two. It took a lot of time to find these little things, 
but I just know it's gonna pay off. With Bakugo's collar, knee pads, and punching fist being so over-exaggerated, I think these grenades are just clutter, and I don't think I'm gonna use them after all. You're kidding me, right? What do you guys think? And who else from My Hero Academia should I make? I started out this build knowing nothing about Bakugo, but now he's one of my favorite customs. Not only does he look good, but he's so much fun to play. In the hands of the right operator, I can't see this guy losing. And now for the real test. Bakugo Katsuki versus the always dangerous Max Snapper with his crocodile punching fist. Let's see how it compares to mine. That was just a little sneak peek guys the full battle test with Eddie and Clark will be way more intense. You know what I'm talking about. Thank you everyone so much for watching. If you want to see a custom Deku, All Might, or someone else, just let me know in the comments and it just might be our next video. A couple weeks ago, my family and I watched the Super Mario movie and ever since, I've had that song stuck in my head. It doesn't help that Clark plays it constantly throughout the day. You know the one I'm talking about. You're one of the worst singers I've ever heard in my life. This is a good looking figure, but just because we have the right parts, that doesn't mean this is gonna be easy. For today's build, we'll be using Battle Giant Tonk, and after thinking about this for a really long time, I decided to skip using this. I just feel that the armor is so limiting to a Battle Giant's customization potential, and I just want to make a really accurate looking Bowser Giant. With that said, let's go outside and start cutting things up. We'll be using almost everything from this figure. The head, arms, legs, tail, and the shell. I have no idea how I'm gonna make these parts work, but the sooner we cut up Tonk, the sooner we can figure it out. We won't be needing Tonk's head, arms, feet, or his double strike armor. I can picture these parts working, but we need to trim them down a little. For the shell, I'm gonna cut this white outer ring off and try to remove as much bulk as possible. The head will need to hold a slip onto the neck as usual.
and the legs need to be tapered towards the top to create a smooth looking transition. Now we'll glue the body onto the legs at a 70 degree angle to achieve that hunched over look that Bowser has. The head looks perfect, but there's a major problem. Because we changed the angle of the body, we also changed the angle of the arms. This not only throws off the height of the fist, which is the main striking point, but it may also affect the swing of the arms. Luckily, this is an easy fix. If I can gently twist this piece until it's perpendicular with the floor, it'll solve all our problems. I'm pretty sure I broke something while I was twisting the tabs, so to make sure they don't move, I'll reinforce them with super glue. It's all starting to come together, but the legs and arms need a little work. Let's glue Bowser to the base, then take him back outside for more carving. The Bowser figure is made out of a soft, rubbery plastic, and it has the consistency of cheese, making it really easy to cut with a knife. I got the legs looking pretty good. Now, I need to taper the arms into the shoulders the same way. The armbands are in the way, so I'll try to remove them in one piece so I can reuse them later. I think he looks really good, and I gotta admit, I didn't expect things to go this smoothly, but he isn't just looking good. I can tell by swinging him that he's functioning properly and gonna be a lot of fun to fight with. Ever since I got my hands on this stuff, I've used it in every single customization. I'm talking about my two-part epoxy clay. It's perfect for fabricating details or patching holes because it'll dry directly on the figure. Now that all the fabrication is complete, let's assemble the pieces. I was planning on cutting the shell in half so I could attach it to each side of the body, but as I was explaining my plan to Eddie, I had a brilliant idea. Why does the shell need to be attached to the body? I can create the same look by attaching it to the tail, and that way I won't need to cut it. There's just one last thing we need to do before we can paint. While Eddie and I were testing Bowser out, we noticed that it was impossible to split him, and I think it's simply because his split strike button is too low. 
To fix this, I'll use an extra base from the parts jar to elevate his button. Perfect. What do you guys think? And how do you feel about an armorless battle giant? I think his upgraded arms and slightly tilted body more than make up for his lack of armor. Way more offense at the expense of defense. It's a nice balance. And even though I definitely want to experiment more with armorless giants, it doesn't mean that I'm giving up on double strike armor. I think we need to have a Bowser vs Mario challenge with Eddie and Clark. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the action. Thank you everyone so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. In today's video, I'll turn one of our Akato Warrior doubles into a one-of-a-kind Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles villain. We already made Raphael as a kicker with removable twin Psy plus a foot soldier with a solid metal sword. And with the new Ninja Turtles movie coming out, I thought it would be really cool to test out my new 3D printer and make a figure I just can't seem to find the right parts for. Shredder. If you saw this video of ours, you already know, a Kato B strike is coming soon. And if you like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as much as Eddie and Clark, Turtle power! then you're losing your mind about the new licensed Akato Warriors. And recently, I got an update on the availability of some of the new items. All the new sets hit stores across the nation in July. Eddie's World, back to you. Moose Toys is already making a Shredder figure that'll be exclusive to the new Ninja Turtles arena, but I've been wanting to make a Shredder for a long time now, and I've already invested a lot of money in purchasing parts that have either been too big, too small, or too bad. But with my new 3D printer, we won't be running into any of those problems. I was able to find an awesome Shredder file for only $2 and I can resize each part as needed. The whole process was really time consuming and I was mostly learning by trial and error, but after finding a millimeter to inches converter and getting the hang of placing supports, I was able to print out all the parts I needed for the project. And even if you include all the misprints, I don't think the cost of the materials exceeded a dollar. For today's project, I'll be using Shadow Flame Phantomu from Akato Series 3. And don't worry, that's not our only double. We got a bunch in the back behind Hayashi. I'm going to remove Fantomu's punching arm and his head, then take him outside for a little shredding.
I got the body completely prepped and now we can start gluing everything together. Shredder's main weapon will be his punching arm and claw. And even though his new fist won't be able to move in and out, I still want it to be able to swivel back and forth. Okay guys, here's our custom shredder. The first thing you probably notice is that I reduced the length of the claws by a lot. And that's because they were so small and brittle, I knew they would just break at some point anyways. And although I love being able to print and customize my own parts, I noticed that a lot of the pieces came out bumpy and low quality, and I'll be constantly working to improve that. But for this project, I really didn't have time to reprint anything. So I just decided to see what some thick enamel paint could do and it actually did a really good job bridging gaps and smoothing the surface out. I also opted to give Shredder white eyes because I think he looks a lot scarier with them. All in all, I think it came out pretty good for our first project with the 3D printer and I can't wait to do all the characters that I haven't been able to find parts for. Thank you everyone so much for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. In today's video, I'll turn this Akato warrior who looks a lot like Bumblebee and whose name even starts with the same first letter as Bumblebee and probably even daydreams about being Bumblebee into, you guessed it, Bumblebee. Hi everyone, welcome back to Eddie's World. In our last customization, we made our very first custom Akato warrior using only parts from our new 3D printer. Today, We'll use it again to make someone you guys have been requesting for a long time now. Bumblebee was popular even back when I was little. And throughout the years, he's only gotten cooler. I would have made Bumblebee sooner, but I simply could not find the right size parts. The funny thing I noticed is that even though a Bumblebee figure might be twice as big as an Akato figure, the head will still be too small. 
thanks to my new 3D printer, adjusting the size of a part is no longer a problem. Nope. Now, we have a whole new set of problems. What is all of this? I just printed this bumblebee head and I've been searching for this for so long, I can't even believe I'm holding it in my hands right now. I made two different sizes and I'm about to see which one looks better on an Akedo figure. We got really lucky with this boot up because the whole right side of his head doesn't have any glue. That's as easy as it gets right there. He has a strong neck. You hear that? I like the fact that I'm going to have to come up with an actual weapon for Bumblebee, but I still haven't figured out what it should be and I'm not going to worry about it until later. I got a bunch of grinding to do, so let's grab some tools and head outside. Don't forget to use your dust mask. Don't forget to use your dust mask. Here's the bigger head. What do you guys think? It's looking more like a Funko Pop, right? Here's the smaller head, and I think we have a winner. This is everything I printed for today's project, and most of it is unusable. I definitely can't use the chest plate, but I might be able to use the feet. Let's cut them out and see if we can get them to work. They're the perfect size and I think we might just get lucky. Real quick, before we move on, I just wanted to answer an email I got from Rocky Lai. Thanks for the email, Rocky. I'm glad you like your Optimus Prime and that's awesome to hear that you're making your own customs. I checked out your channel and I just have to say that your custom overflow and custom wild vine are totally awesome. I'm super impressed. To answer your question, I have the doubles back there just to make the background a little more interesting to look at. And now my drawers are empty and ready for some series five doubles. Guys, I've been staring at these legs for a really long time now. And for some reason, one is taller than the other. I'm not convinced that this is gonna work, but there's no turning back now. To make this connection as strong as it needs to be, I'm gonna run a wire from one leg through the body and into the other leg. In other words, we need to drill some holes. Be really careful whenever you're drilling this close to your fingers. Now, I'll bend a small piece of wire into a U-shape and feed it through the holes and into the legs. What do you guys think? The left side looks pretty good and I think I have an idea. Let's print out another set of legs and give Bumblebee two left feet. While I was waiting for the print, I grinded off a bunch of details that didn't suit Bumblebee's appearance. I also did a side-by-side -side comparison with Optimus Prime and I noticed that Bumblebee was a bit too tall. Hopefully, I remember to fix that. No promises. The leg is done printing, so let's cut it off and see if it's gonna work. There's one and two. What do you guys think? I gotta make a few adjustments, but I'm pretty happy with it. And this concludes the 3D printer portion of the video. For the remaining details on Bumblebee, I'll be using Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy clay that self-hardens in under eight hours. Make sure you mix it up good. The first detail I'm working on is the chest plate which is basically the front end of a VW Beetle. I'll shape it in one piece, then cut it in half after it hardens a little. These little details like the headlights and bumpers take a lot of time and patience, so make sure you don't rush this part. And if you get overwhelmed or start doubting your skills, take some time out and pet your dog. Your dog will comfort you and remind you, it's just a toy. One crucial component to working with epoxy clay or any other type of clay is having the right tools. Sometimes the right tool is a straw. As I'm sculpting, I keep walking back to my laptop where I have pictures of Bumblebee that I'm trying to go off of. And in the main picture that I've been using, 
Bumblebee doesn't have anything on his back. But I just so happened to notice another picture of Bumblebee where his doors are on his back spread open like wings. And it looks amazing. I'm not sure if I can get it to work, but I need to try. That looks so good. But they look like they might interfere with the split strike. I'm going to make them anyways, and hopefully we can figure it out. But with or without doors, we need a weapon. Let's hit the parts jar and see what we can find. This is going to be perfect for what I have in mind, but if you want to see what I turn it into, you got to stick around to the end because I want it to be a surprise. Comment right now what you think it is. This has definitely been one of the hardest and most intricate builds to date, and I've been focusing so much on fabrication that I haven't even realized how difficult painting is going to be. But as I was brushing on the primer, it started to hit me and I realized that I could mess it all up with a bad paint job. A lot of the details are extremely tiny and require the smallest of my brushes and the steadiest hand. One thing that really saved a lot of time was that each different color is separated by a hard line. It's not like I'm just painting some armor on his hand. There actually is a piece of armor on his hand to paint. And this made the whole process a lot more enjoyable and something I need to keep in mind for future builds. This is by far my new favorite custom Akato Warrior. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Bumblebee. What do you guys think? Between the 3D printed parts and the clay sculpted parts, I think we managed to include all the important details that make Bumblebee so iconic. Oh, and did anyone notice something on the back? Those are magnets for his magnetic detachable doors. My solution to the splitting problem. As Bumblebee's head tilts back and makes contact with the doors, the magnets allow for just enough movement for a split strike. And what about the weapon? I did a lot of research, and in Transformers 5, The Last Night, Bumblebee attacks Nemesis Prime with the Warhammer. Now, every picture I found of the Warhammer was different, so I just kind of did a mashup of all of them. I just barely finished painting this guy in time and everything is still a little tacky. Otherwise, we'd be testing him out right now. But that's gonna have to wait for the battle challenge with Eddie and Clark. Thank you everyone so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. What is up? This is Eddie's world. This is Eddie. This is Clarky. Say what's up? What up? We are here to film custom Ooh. tournament number seven. And guys, let's just get right into it. I'm gonna introduce all of the fighters. We have Doc Ock, never, never battle tested. Next, we have Golden Freddy. We battle tested Golden Freddy. Do you guys remember? He beat all the other bears. We have Squito, who we all know, he beat Astro, yeah. our strongest warrior. But guys, you know what's coming next? Let's go! Lobit, did we battle test Lobit? No, yeah, no. No? No? no. no? Wow. What, 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 what? And Lobit has removable brass LOL knuckles. Whoops. Okay, guys, the next fighter is Bakugo Katsuki. Guys, did we battle test this guy? No. Where is Lobit stripes on him? I mean it how I want to. Okay, next guys, Battle Giant Bowser. Oh my gosh, look at that. Next, we have the Shredder. Pretty soon we'll be able to compare our Shredder to 
Moose Toy Shredder, right? Yeah! Next, Bumble. this is one of my favorites. Bumblebee with Warhammer that weighs a ton and a half. And, yeah, the doors are magnetic so that he can be split. And they're also removable if you don't want them, but he looks awesome with them. Daddy has a challenge, as usual. We're each going to choose our favorite to win the tournament. Now guys, if your favorite wins the tournament, you get an unlimited shopping spree at Pearl unlimited. Ridge Mall. Up to $50. Uh. Clarky, you get to choose first. Bumblebee, okay. Oh Skeeto, that's a smart yeah. move, guys. Okay guys, so you each have picked your favorite. Clarky's is Bumblebee. Eddie's is Squeedo. Very good choices on both of your parts. Now, here is how the bracket is gonna go for the first round. Our first fight is gonna be Doc Ock versus Lolbit. Our second fight is Squeedo versus Golden Freddy. So Clarky, you will be Golden Freddy. Our third fight is gonna be Shredder versus Bakugo Katsuki. Our fourth fight is Bowser versus Bumblebee. <laughs> Clarky, I'm sure you can take him. Ooh, that might be hard though. Look the way his button is, right? Can you hit his button? You can, you can hit his button. Ooh. Ooh. I know, and he's leaned over. So guys, we do not fight by the number system. We do all of our fights just the first the two split strikes and that's the way we're gonna continue to do it let the tournament begin okay guys we got lolbit versus doc ock first to two split strikes moves on to the semi-finals guys the loser is out of the tournament you all know Ooh. that right so guys none of you have chosen either of these fighters so it's okay yes we shouldn't have any blow-ups, am I right? Mm -hmm. We're not gonna make any clips for the top 10 angriest Akedo moments part two, right? Yeah. Let's have all the fighters like watching. See that? That's, oh. that's interesting. Yo, that's too close, Squeedo. <laughs> Get over here. Okay. Okay. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh! <laughs> Yo! 1-0. Doc Ock is winning. One more and you're out, Lolbit. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, yes! oh nice, nice. <laughs> he's trying to, he's trying to make it an angry Sakito moment part two. <laughs> oh, why is that there? Okay, no, man down. Okay, cut. Okay, guys, we have Squeedo versus Golden Freddy. Are you ready? Fight! Split strike! Oh, there goes the microphone! Yeah! Oh! What? 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 Oh my gosh, Golden Freddy just... <laughs> Dad, that was Eddie Gap! <laughs> okay, I didn't see that one coming. It is one to zero. Golden Freddy is winning. Eddie's sad because his dreams might go down the drain. Ready? Fight, split strike. Oh, nice, son. Nice, you just tied it up. It is one to one. Oh, but look at your fighter. Our controller is so broken. The next, <laughs> the next split strike wins. Okay, ready, fight, split strike. Oh my gosh, you did. Okay guys, Eddie's sad, his guy is out, shopping spree is out for him. Next, we have Shredder versus Bakugo. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh my goodness. Oh, nice son. Okay, it's one to one. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh, okay, okay, Shredder's out, Bakugo moves on. <laughs> what? 
does he sing his song? Peaches, peaches, peaches. Oh! Oh! Corky, that doesn't count. Eddie, why'd you do that to Bumblebee? It was an accident. Yeah, I right. Left here to do that. Holy smokes. Where'd Corky go? Okay, guys, we have Bowser versus Bumblebee. Okay. Oh my gosh. If you want to win, you got to break his arm. Oh my gosh, when your door's closed. Oh, I made Bowser too hard. You can't split him. Split him, Clarky. His arm! Oh no! His arm got stuck! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay, guys, it is 1 0. Bowser's winning. Clarky's shopping spree is on the line. Ready, fight, split strike! Oh, he's such a big hunk. Yeah. Oh! Guys, there's more than one way to win a fight. It is one to one, Clarky. You need this win for your shopping spree dreams, and maybe you can buy a little something for brother. Maybe like no, never. Ready, fight, split strike. And then there were four! Okay guys, the first fight of our semifinals, we have Golden Freddy versus Doc Ock, and the winner of this fight goes to the championship round. First the two is the winner. Ready, fight, split strike! Oh! Okay, it is 1-0, Doc Ock is winning. Ready, fight, split strike! Oh! Doc Ock goes to the championship round. Okay, guys, it is Bowser versus Bakugo. The winner will fight Doc Ock. I'm gonna be Doc Ock. No. I'm gonna be Doc Ock. I want it to be. No, I'm gonna be Doc Ock. So okay, I guys, I, I don't know what's happening right now. I guess the winner of this fight, ready. First to two, guys. Fight! Split strike! <laughs> he's, he's, he's just gonna let you. Even Bowser is happy. Oh! Clarky, you can split him. Okay. I got a new technique. Guys, <laughs> it's 1 0. It's 1 0. Ready? Fight! Split strike! Come on. Come on, Clarky. Uh, even Bowser is happy. Come on. So hard. Oh, okay. Championship fight. <laughs> this is the Series 7 <laughs> Custom Tournament Championship round. We have Bowser, who I think is unsplittable, <laughs> versus Doc Ock, who I also first think is unsplittable. First to three. Wait, no, I don't know if we. Five. No, I don't think we need that first many. Two one. First two one. No, first the two. Guys, this is the first tournament where I actually think one of these guys is invincible. Shopping spree is off the table, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Stay tuned to see if the boys get their shopping spree anyways. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. Did you, did you punch him? Oh, like that. Oh my gosh, guys. Bowser is... Can I hold on to him? It's like he has his star, no. guys. 1-0, Bowser's winning. Ready, fight, split strike. Oh. I want to... Wait, you like... Yeah, Eddie, yeah, yeah. Oh! <laughs> Okay, that's the only way Bowser is losing here. I was here. him. <laughs> he was like... <laughs> <laughs> it is one to one. Ready, fight, split strike. 
Does that mean you get your shopping spree? Yay! Are you gonna buy something for brother? I will share with you. Okay, guys, let's go on the shopping spree right now. Yay! Even Bowser is happy. What's a shopping spree? Okay, guys, where are we going? Pearl Ridge. Pearl Ridge. For what? Shopping spree. For a shopping spree? You ready? I only yeah. get because I won. <laughs> None of you guys won. Okay guys, some of your shopping spree money is gone. Eddie bought, what is this trooper Eddie? Uh, um, you know, I think it might be Commander Fox. Commander Fox, yeah. okay, Clarky bought a fidget clicker. <laughs> and that was five dollars. Oh. Probably like 200. Guys, this is kind of a deal, no? Guys, this will be annoying. Oh my Guys, gosh, she's still going with that. Leatherface pretty woman. This is why I don't like doing stuff. Ooh. Okay, one. What is that? Yeah. Check out these mini arcades. Look at that Anakin Skywalker. Yo, yeah. this is cool, man. Yeah. This would be cool to have, but like, his lightsaber is. Guys, 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 look. <laughs> That's cool. Too. That's cool. I want it. Samurai Boba. What's up with that, dude? Super. What is he from? I don't know. Look, there's gotta be a um, Deku hooded here. There's gotta be, but it's gonna be humongous. Ta -da -da! Ooh, this one is good. This is pre-painted. That one comes pre-painted? Yeah. Guys, oh, look. Transformers. Wow, oh, I didn't even know. One hour later. Slow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, yes! How much you got? 250. Oh, no. You got, oh, you got two. Oh, nice, dude. Did you see him? How much is it? Aim, boys, aim. Aim. Little boy won this many tickets. It's still counting 21,000. It already counted 12,000. Okay, guys, we gotta recharge for more shopping. Oh, that looks so good. Is it good? Eddie, did you get ice cream? Mm -hmm. Try some soup. Sugar soup. <laughs> We're back from our shopping spree. This is from Tilt. It cost us nothing. Well, okay. We got like these. Okay. Mine broke. Clarky's broke already in the car. Ooh. Still works though. Okay, so this is from Animation Magic. Okay. Clarky, you got the clicker. Yep. I got this. Clarky, you still like your clicker? You're still clicking it? Okay. Okay. Eddie got this do back. Okay. It came with the do back came with this instruction booklet. 
Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, and of course, these are all knockoffs, right? Yeah. They're pretty cheap. $20 for Eddie mm -hmm. at Animation Magic. Like, this $5. This is like literally all Yeah, this is all Eddie bought on his shopping spree. Except you're going to buy some Robux, yeah. right? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay, so Clarky bought this from Tinker Toys. I Wait, bought, not Tinker. Thinker Toys, right? I bought this one because the other one is sweetest. Okay, show us how you do your um, double twist no. action. I hope you enjoy our custom tournaments. Please like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video. The force is strong with these two.